<laughs> All right, Kristen here from CultureAsylum.com, and I am here with Stolen Babies. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. No problem. Well, you guys just did an absolutely kick-ass performance here in Philadelphia. So how's the tour going? Such an eclectic tour right now. It's uh, five days in, five shows in so far. Really good, really fun. We uh, are really getting along with the other bands, really enjoying the other bands. Ronnie goes out and dances during Cold Chamber. Every night. We are ha really happy to be touring with Lacuna Coil again, and then Seven Dust has been amazing, so super nice guys. We're loving it. Yeah, yeah. every band on this tour slams. Every night. It's awesome. Yeah, what he said, what she said. <laughs> So you guys are still currently touring behind your latest album, Not, you know, so what can you tell us about what you're working on next? Anything in particular? What are we allowed to talk about working on Oh, well, you know, it's the artist's curse to talk about what you're doing next and then it doesn't happen. So writing, I mean, after this tour we're going to go home, we're going to finish up two videos that are at different stages of being done, one more closely to being done than the other. And uh, we're going to see touring-wise what's up next. We have a few one-off kind of shows booked right now. We'll see if we're going to book more dates around them and whatnot, but definitely new music is the priority, just writing for the next release. And, and pretty consistent touring. You know, it's, it's not like we're going to take two years off to write. Then even while we're writing, we'll, we'll still be out. So it's, and that's what's so exciting too, because you know, we came back from a lot of time off and it feels great to be back out and get such a nice response and that knot's been doing really well. So we plan to be very productive. Absolutely. I mean, what I think is great about you guys have been a very do-it-yourself band like the whole time. Does that present any particular challenges? Yes. Uh, money is hard to come by. And, and we're too proud to do a Kickstarter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, different strokes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, you, you go ahead. I, I don't, you know, okay. challenges. Okay, fine, I will. The challenges are the same, uh, I think they'd be the same either way for me internally. You know, just the whole being in a band and being around people all the time and being out. Um, something that is, would be hard for me either way. But I think for us too, because we have no scene that we can hang with or fit into. It's it's very fun, but also it is a challenge for us to know what shows we can be on, and we're just having fun doing whatever we can get on and meeting other bands that are coming from maybe different places, and it expands our horizons. Maybe we expand theirs. Bless you. Sorry. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and Ronnie sneezes, so it's awesome. And as far as I'm just... I'm allergic to that question. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the state of the industry anyway, it makes things kind of, for us, it's an obvious option that we want to continue doing things on our own and because it's just the, the, op the other options out there aren't very attractive to us. So it's just cool to know that we're in control of what we do and we'll, we'll continue doing that. Whether we team up with another label or something, it's still very DIY. It will always be that way for us. I know you guys recently did some dates with Rasputina, was it? And, you know, how does that type of crowd compare to, say, this one? Do you want to? I, I thought it well, was great because it was also with the World and Inferno Friendship Society. We really got into. And Rasputina, we did play with a very long time ago. And we were just kind of figuring out what we were doing, what our sound was. And that show changed everything for us. It kind of led to other things, meeting other people. So playing with them was really important for us. And it was so great. So different from a lot of the things we've been doing. Um, I don't want to say better, just different. But lots yeah. of fun. It was so great seeing them, you know? Yeah. yeah. What she said, I mean, back, yeah. at, back in early 2000s when we first played with Rasputina in L.A., uh, it was just a seminal point for the band because we were doing a lot of shows on the Sunset Strip, doing a lot of local shows with bands we didn't know who we were playing with night to night, you know? It was just hit or miss. And uh, when we got that show, it was just kind of like, whoa, that audience really took to us. What, what was the reason? Why? You know what I mean? And we realized, well, you know, the goth industrial world embraces us kind of 
more than others would think other genres would. And um, so from there we knew, yeah, let's try to play with bands like that. But we, but when you're a band like us, the important thing is, and maybe this is going to address a, a, another question you had, we play for who listens. It's important for us. You know, on the World Inferno 2, we, we had a lot of fans come up to us and say, oh, you guys are playing with Seven Dust and Coal Chamber and the Kuna Coil next. How do you feel about that? And it, it's what's foreign to people asking questions like that. Like, it's hard for them to see us playing with other bands and other scenes or genres. It's not that unusual for us. We're so used to playing with bands on other scenes. We're just gonna we're good, just gonna play. You know what I mean? To be able to be in a venue like this and play for however many close to a thousand people, fucking a. You know what I mean? It's like that's what bands strive for. So whether half of the people walk out liking us and now are new fans, that's awesome. You know, or, or whether it's more or less, it's we're, we're here, we're playing. That's the point. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool for us to be, and it's again, kind of the challenge and the reward. They're kind of the same thing. Like. We're different, we're unique. The, it's very easy for a band that's only a punk band, only an industrial band, only a metal band, to grow on that scene. It's very easy. You just get on it, you start playing with the same bands, you work up the circuit, you get your name out. With us, we, we are constantly proving ourselves, like conquering an audience. So it's very cool for us to be embraced by a hardcore metal crowd. But it, and it's also very cool for us to play something that's not a metal tour and then the, cr the crowd just right away, they feel it, they get it, they're looking for something different. We, you know, all the different bills we've been lucky to be on, some of them have, and most of them have even exceeded our expectations with the crowd response. So it's, it's cool that we could play and cross over. Yeah. And we'll keep doing that. No, that's really awesome. I think that a lot of times genres were put in place in general so that critics or people had a way to kind of box a band in, and I hate that because I think that you know each artist is unique in their own way and they can bring something else to the table. I understand the, the concept of scenes though. You know, it's in this world, it's really important for people to want to fit in, so people will latch onto a scene because there's a sense of community. And we, I mean, just my whole life, coming from you know being very young could never really fit in for many reasons anyway so it just is only natural that now I'm in a band that has the same issue <laughs> you want yeah. to call the issue it just comes naturally whether I or we like it or not and it's working out all right and it's fun we're having fun so. I mean I think fans are like really hungry for something new and different too because so much of what we see is so cookie cutter all the time so it's awesome even to see somebody rock out with an accordion was awesome to me so, so what is next for you guys after this tour working on the new stuff finishing those videos uh, you know we, we released not less than a year ago but um, because that came after this kind of a, a this hi hiatus where everyone was doing their own things with their lives, all of a sudden we just have this bug and we really want to start where uh, where we pick up where we left off and uh, we're kind of uh, just really excited to move on. And Not was a dark album and uh, not that we're not dark, not dark, but we have a lot of uh, some more zaniness inside of us, I think, too. So. Awesome. <laughs> more shows, more shows. Great, is there anybody you'd like to tour with that you haven't yet? It's hard to say. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of bands think. out there. I mean, obviously. Dolly Parton, Madonna. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at the lines here. Humphrey Bogart. I would love to tour yeah, with Humphrey well, Bogart. Bowie would be nice. Um, and I, I would like Benjamin, to tour with Benjamin Franklin. I would like Chicago. to tour with the Giant Camel, personally. You know, obviously there's there's, there's <laughs> bands we're fans of. You know, that obviously would be nice to cross paths with. I mean, Primus would be really fucking cool to play with. You know, it'd be nice to play with like Tomahawk or something. You know, anything Mike Patton is really involved in would be cool. But you know, we're we're liking the um, randomness, I guess, of uh, the things that come our way, and it's cool. Keep it interesting for you guys. It really does. Like after this interview, we might get an email from our agent. Well, maybe not because he's standing right there, but. Um, <laughs> We, it's very exciting to see what lands, and we're like, oh wow, we never thought of really being on that tour, but awesome, let's do it. So, you know, 
to kind of wrap things up with you guys, I look at music as a universal language that everyone can speak and understand, even if we take a different message away. Is there anything in particular you hope your music will say to listeners or even make them feel? Yeah, well, you know, for example, look, the Boston bombing the other day, you know, we had a day off that day. It was very easy to take in all the news, and that's pretty much the only thing anybody was talking about. Um, um, the next day we had a show in uh, not too far from Boston, you know, it was Worcester, Massachusetts. And to have people come up to us at the merch table afterwards, one guy was like spilling his heart out, saying that he worked an hour away from there, and or lived an hour away from there, but he used to work across the street from where it took place, and you know, he was just thanking us. Other people were too for for the escapism. You know, the, the the that the show was really something that took their their mind off of what happened, even if it's for a little bit. You know, it's not hard to see that the world is very damaged. Um, you know, lyrically, our the content of our songs, whether people hear them or not. You know, if they're just vibing on the music, then fine. But. If someone could walk away in a better mood after seeing a show or they like our music, it's a way for them to get away from whatever it is, um, that's a good thing. And I think also just as far as stylistically, musically, what we do, what we kind of, our message is we're true to ourselves, our art form. We're not trying to cater to what's current in the industry, what what the current sound is, or fad, or yeah. we, what we do is what we've always done, even from the roots of the band we all came from together. So that to us, the message we send, and even to inspire bands, is just be yourself. Yeah. Stay be true yourself. to what you do and work hard, and it, it's the best thing to see that what we planted is a seed never had any certain expectations we just know we love it and we're doing it and it's you know we're getting out there it's it's pretty satisfying i'd say just like be yourself at all costs whether it's because no one else is is doing what you're doing or if everyone else is doing what you're doing too you know it's like the dr seuss with the star the star belly sneeches you know everyone's getting the stars but if you want to get it Grant has that book. i know i just i've always that, that always rang a bell with me because i i have star tended belly. to especially when i was younger of in some ways because i never could fit in then i got into this weird zone where i was trying not to and then of course now in my uh Old ancient years. Old adolescence. <laughs> my old, my old preview uh, uh whatever that means. I just, it just, I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do. You know, if we're doing something that we've been doing, and we see all of a sudden it's, it's kind of we see more people doing this kind of thing, or people calling us a certain thing that we're not because we have an accordion or whatever. It could have been, it could be a turn off, but, um, but we're having so much fun and just doing what we're doing, and we're just gonna keep doing it. So. You guys are doing an absolutely awesome job. I'm going to thank you so much for taking a few minutes to speak with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right.